Hola, aquí Kelly Bear, bienvenido a mi canal. Today I am coming at you with another tarot tag. Yes, two tarot tags in a row. But that's because I was tagged by the creator of this. Um, and that is Cesar of 78 Puertas or 78 Puertas. And it is the Tarot Collection Top Decks tag, as you would have seen in the title of this video. Um, I, I just couldn't help myself. And Cesar was very clear in his video when he tagged folks that there's absolutely no pressure to do the tag, obviously. But I I just, I really wanted to. I, I, enjoyed, uh, I enjoyed the prompts. There's 20 20 prompts and so I'm going to try to keep this um quick and um not go off on tangents um I go, full disclaimer I, I started filming this video and I got sort of 15 20 minutes in and I had shown like three decks because I was going off on like like just complete waffles and I was like no one needs this I don't need this it's going to be like a two hour video at this point so I'm like no let's start again let's try so um I will say that I because this is really drilling down into uh, you know very specifics of of your tarot collection um I did find it a little bit overwhelming to pick from my entire tarot collection so I had an idea and it also works because it's sort of also in honor of Cesar himself who does read with all sorts of tarot decks including um you know Mas, um Thoth and and Smithwaite and so on but I predominantly think of him as a Marseille and Pip deck reader. So what I did is I pulled out every single um, Marseille and Pip deck in my collection and chose the um, the decks from that. Um, so it sort of limited the the number that I had to choose from, which was less overwhelming. And also it it's sort of more in keeping with Cesar's own video where he he did show a variety of decks, but um, mostly Marseille and, and Pip. So we're just sort of keeping it in that vibe just just so you're wondering why they are all of a of a certain thing um i will also say that i've got some video resources regarding tarot de marseille so if you find tarot decks ugly or you can't not tarot decks marseille tarot decks unattractive like the classic ones or you've never been able to find a marseille deck that you like um or you want resources on how to learn tarot de marseille i will link um my tarot de marseille thirst traps video down below and i will also link my tarot de marseille resources learning resources beginners resources for you in the description box down below as well should you should you be interested it will be there for you um i'm actually you know what i'm gonna write that down at the end of my thing uh because of my notes because you know what i will absolutely forget if i don't write it down <laughs> so the first prompt that cesar gives us is what was your very first tarot deck right what was your first tarot deck ever now if i was going by the first tarot deck ever 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 it would be the osho zen i bought it in about 96 97 um but I, I, i'm not showing that i'm talking about the first ever marseille tarot deck that i got instead um, and that was the New Choice Tarot de Marseille by Rosario Salerno. I backed the Indiegogo campaign for this. Um, and that was, I think, the, the Indiegogo launched, was it in 2017? And it was delivered in 2018. Or maybe it launched at the beginning of 2018 and delivered by sort of autumn 2018. I can't remember. All I know is that I started learning Tarot de Marseille in 2018 and um, the rest as they say is history for anyone that watches my channel um this was the first tarot deck uh marseille again i keep saying tarot sort of in generically but what I, I i mean to say is the first marseille tarot deck that i actually thought that i was drawn to sort of artistically and you know when we talk to people that are beginners in tarot um we always say right find a deck that you know that you find appealing that you find the artwork appealing that you resonate with um because you're more inclined to want to learn um and to want to keep picking up the deck and so when it came to want you know i i wasn't actually even sure if i ever wanted to learn marseille it just looked so confusing and and i wasn't sure if it was going to be something that i but you know i saw people in the community really sort of showing really 
sharing really good resources and making really good videos about it and I was like I just can't get over the fact that I can't find a deck that I like though and it was just like ah and when this one came along I was like right okay let's get this one and 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 it was my it was the it was the one that did the trick for me you know like I owe this deck a lot and although I don't work with it as much as I used to because I have so many sort of Marseille and Pip deck now Pip decks now apologies that the camera keeps wobbling I keep knocking the um the camera holder um I, I owe it a debt for for being the one that sort of it was the gateway drug as it were <laughs> into uh my 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 sort of almost obsession with tarot most tarot de Marseille. uh so yeah that's the first prompt so prompt two is which is your most recent tarot deck now i my two most recent tarot decks came in one day after the other one was a marseille and one was a smith wheat and um actually the 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 marseille came in the day before the smithwaite but because again like i said i'm just going by marseille it will be the gay marseille by charlie claire burgess who is also the creator of the fifth spirit tarot and the um uh oh my god my brain is 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 thinking radical radical tarot book my brain farted just then because i think i'm getting a bit hungry i'm filming this quite close to lunchtime which is danger zone for me because yeah you might hear my tummy grumbling so i apologize for that i need a sip of water excuse me okay so yeah this were uh, i backed the kickstart it was such an excellently run kickstarter campaign um i love the colors it's not really showing up correctly on on my screen at least but this this color here the background color is the most sumptuous and delicious sea foam green very sort of mid 20th century sea foam green i absolutely love it there's the addition of this really scrumptious pink and these purples um it's a just it this this deck makes me so happy um the cardstock is great the artwork is great it's great to see um really really inclusive and diverse queer representation it still works as a like a classic marseille there's loads of interesting fun nods i mean we have a sapphic pool party going on here in the moon what's not to love um we have both the french and the english titles which makes it a really excellent deck for beginners and i do believe that this deck is now open for pre-orders for those who didn't back the kickstarter or missed the kickstarter so i think my camera keeps going out of focus but yeah the colors again just absolutely yum uh yeah just there's so many wonderful little additions clever little nods and additions in this in these cards i mean frida carlo as strength oh, i literally saw this plaster cast sort of corset it's not really a corset um that uh she had painted at a, a frida cardo exhibition it was just it was a moment my goodness but yeah so my most recent the gay marseille by Char charlie claire burgess on to prompt three um which is which tarot deck has the best colors and this is so tricky i mean i've literally just been waxing lyrical about the delicious colors in the previous two decks and there were so many that i could have chosen um but i tried to choose two uh, decks that had sort of quite different color palettes but still really enjoyable color palettes again i could have probably put like 10 decks in this but like i said just two um the first one i'm going to show is the squid cake marseille this is the independently produced version um I might I should, probably should have picked the um, mass market one to show because the cardstock is less shiny this is a lovely linen cardstock it shuffles beautifully but what I really I mean the backs are just so much fun again there's this almost like sea foam green which is just I just love um look at these little strawberries um but it's i really really love pink and orange together are those complementary tones and it's like you've got baby pink and then almost like this like burgundy pink you've got a hot pink and an orange oh, and then it's all offset with like this sea foam greeny blue color this deck is very fun for me anyway it's very um it's a great contemporary beginners deck for people that just just don't get on with the the original like versions that we usually think of when we think of tarot de marseille um yeah it's just it's just fun 
um, and it's one of my faves and it's small it's perfect for my small hands the the mass market version is like my out and about version for reading for friends oh do you know what i'm meeting up with a friend tomorrow for a dog walk and we might go for a coffee afterwards and um he's always like oh will you do me a reading so maybe i'll take my my uh this squid cake <laughs> uh, not this one the, the mass market one but yeah i just i just reminded myself that i might get to do some tarot readings tomorrow uh so yeah so there's that one um and the other one which does also include quite a bit of orange actually now that i'm looking looking at the backs here is uh, le tarot archetypal um and it has a very again in the in the tradition of marseille where they have quite a limited color palette but it's just so different to any other color palette that i've seen in a lot of decks um you've got these really you know rather than a very sort of primary yellow we've got this gorgeous golden yellow um this sort of very sort of classic it's it's a true red but it does look like it has a touch of orange in it and then you've got like this almost like deepest indigo blue oh it's it's just scrumptious i really enjoy the faces in this one um like you know what i'm not a clown but like clowns freak me out but for some reason i've grown to just really enjoy the 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 uh the valets the pages in in this deck this deck just oh and, and i love how it sort of marseille but brought it really up to date and sort of kind of is a lot of the images is quite simplified and zoomed in so l'étoile um you see here it's very zoomed in on the the, the person that you would see in the star and then and the jugs and then the jugs that's uh, the jugs and the jug <laughs> um but yeah i just let's find another example so obviously the 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 um the court cards are just sort of zoomed in faces let's see if we can find another major a major card would be a good example to show if i can find one sod's law in it can't find one as soon as we blink in it let's just find a major there we go like the chariot that's probably a bit more of a busy that's one of the busiest cards in fact la lune a bit more simplified to a classic moon do you see what i mean like it sort of distills um i like that the knights just have the horses and, and without the rider so then they have a horse and then the um the, the symbol of of what the suit is uh let's find le, le, le diable you know just la papesse i mean how clever a representation of la papesse le soleil gorgeous gorgeous so yeah two very different color palettes but two color palettes that make me very happy and that i very much enjoy so on to prompt number four so what tarot deck has the best faces oh my goodness again so many contenders but i had to narrow it down again i picked two decks uh the first one is tarot gulliver and i have actually picked out some of my favorites to show you rather than just sort of rummaging trying to find them um like this king of baton he there's so many I've, I've noticed that i quite like the decks that have like quite shifty shady looking faces because it just makes it just makes me laugh although this the king of swords looks quite sad and this almost sort of sassy hipster-esque pouty magician <laughs> this knight of coins just kind of looks over it I think they even they would wish their horse would go a little faster, maybe. <laughs> the face on death. I mean, he is having, I was going to say he's having the time of his life, but he's not. He's having the time of his death. Or well, they, you know, why gender death, right? <laughs> this, this guy looks like he, I don't know, he either looks like he is thinking about something saucy or he's surreptitiously trying to break wind i don't know it's very funny um i also look like how kind of wait look at this these little moustaches the little face on cupid i just really even the horse faces <laughs> are really cute she looks kind of annoyed she's looks like she's clenching her jaw 
you know, like, oh, I don't know. I just find the faces quite fun. <laughs> so, yeah, so that is uh, Tarot Gulliver. And the other one I have is Le Tower de Marseille par Paul Carr. This one, my goodness, the faces in this one really do crack me up. We've got a, a cross-eyed empress. We've got, again, shifty, shifty bitch, shifty looking queen of coins. I do not trust this woman. I do not trust her. No, he looks kind of a bit shifty too. What's he up to? What's he thinking? She just looks annoyed. <laughs> It was this one when I was going, oh, I really love the, I was, I'd forgot it was, I was getting them mixed up. It's the, the face on the Cupid in this one looks really annoyed. They're like, ah, <laughs> oh, <laughs> just, I don't know. It was quite vindictive. I mean, and why did, what did he do? What did this guy do to you, Cupid? Shifty looking papers. I've got the beads of sweat, the, like the stress on this poor strength face. Come on, camera. It just doesn't want to focus. <laughs> he looks kind of resigned. <laughs> and the fool. Oh god, yeah, and the hermit again. He's all he looks a little shifty. He's like He's enticing you to follow him, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, I, these two probably have the funnest faces of all my collection. But again, like I said, there could have been many others that I could have chosen. Prompt number five, which is your largest tarot deck. Right, so I'm going to do the same as Cesar. I'm going to show my like longest Pippi Marseille deck and then I'll show like my widest, my wide boy. Um, so my longest <laughs> for now, for now uh, is uh, the um, Cthulhu Tower of the Dark Arts. I think that's what it's called. Um, and it's a pip deck. It's based on Lovecraft work. I've yet, I, I was like, when I got this, I was like, I'm going to buy a bunch of Lovecraft books and read them so I understand this deck because the book doesn't really like give you much. Um, and then I just, I, I was like, I was, I'll save it for like spooky season and then just never got around to it. The thing that does frustrate me with this deck is that the, um, like it's, God, it's so long. I can't just about get it in the, the same space as the, the other decks fit very easily. Um, is the fact that regardless of what the suit is, the background is the same colour. And I think it was a really, you see what I mean? And although we can see that this is clearly swords and this is clearly like pentacles or coins or whatever, discs, whatever you want to call it, um, I do think it was a missed opportunity to use some really nice different jewel tones for the for the background colour of, of, the, of, the, of the pip cards. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's a long boy. It's a long boy. Um, but yeah, see if I can actually pull this out. Remember to pull this out for spooky season this year and, and have a, have a play with it. So that's my longest tarot deck. Now my widest probably would have been Le Tower Noir by Mathieu Aquier, but I trimmed it down. Um, so it is the Feel Good Tarot de Marseille. Or is it the, it's either, yeah, Le Tarot de Marseille Feel Good. <laughs> we just got them mixed up. It's a very glossy um, uh, cardstock. But it's quite, it's quite, it's quite wide um, compared to like a classic size. Oh, hang on, let me grab a classic. Like, so this is my Gay Marseille, which is much more sort of standard size. So it's quite a bit. And actually, let me show you, you know, just quite a bit of difference. Um but yeah, it's it's um, a mass market deck. It's not technically a Marseille, as you can see here. The arrangement is not is not typical to a you know the four of baton uh, in a Marseille. So it's a little bit misleading. The title. Um, it is a pip deck, not a Marseille, as we know. And I say it often when I'm sharing Marseille information. All um, Marseilles are pip decks, but not all pip decks are Marseille. Although it is a fun deck, I do really like um, the additions to the pip cards. Um, it's very young, it's very fresh, it's very sort of, yeah, we've got, you know, 
girls with pink hair and black lipstick which i'm all about love that um so yeah this is my my my, my wide boy my wide gal there we go so on to prompt number six and you might have guessed that if I'm showing you my largest decks that the next prompt might be the opposite of that and that is the case it is which is your smallest tarot deck I have a number of like travel size tarot decks and tarot decks in a tin you know like I previously mentioned squid cock squid cock squid cake Marseille um is that a Freudian slip uh squid cake Marseille is quite small but my smallest deck is in fact now since last September when I think this came in is Marseille Pongervie by um Krista RTK Tarot. It's so wee. It's so cute. This is the travel size version. I would like to eventually spring for the the standard size version. But this is my little like my little travel size Marseille deck. Like my most travel. This like this is the Marseille deck that if I've just got like my bum bag with me, like my fanny pack, I guess you'd call them in the, the States. Um this will fit in there with all the other stuff that I need whereas like something like even the squid cake is probably not gonna fit and like get my phone and my keys and my like coin purse and all the other bits that I like to have with me so this is great this also fits really nicely in my dog walking bag as well so yes 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 small so small actually again let me get a, a game I say card to again show you the size difference um <clears throat> Please excuse my froggy throat today. So here we go. <laughs> it's so wee. I think this might actually be the smallest deck I own full stop in my entire collection. I'm pretty sure at this point. Because I have had a couple of contenders, but I don't think any are quite as wee as this one. It's so cute. It's so cute. But yeah. So, um, yeah. Let's grab this all up. Boop, 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 boop. That is prompt number six. On to prompt number seven. And that is, what tarot deck has the best court cards? Now, I've already shown the polka and the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm so froggy of my throat. I keep sipping water and it's not, it's not necessarily helping. I might have to uh, do a nice mucilaginous herbal tea blend for myself later to clear this. Um, it's TMI. Um, but yeah, the, uh, what did I show? The um, tarot Gulliver and the, the polka. Those both have really great court cards, right? Um, so I, I picked another two that I really love. Uh, the first one is the Tarot Siren by um, Wandering Oracle. Um, they're the, also the creators of the Marshmallow Marseille. And again, I pulled out some of the court cards, or all of the court cards, so you could get a look. I mean, we have an Oxalotl, people. We have an Oxalotl, I mean. I really love this. This is like my most summery Marseille. The, again, the colours are really fun. It's small and portable. I love the characters in it. I mean, the courts are particularly fun to me. I just like it when it's not just a horse. So they do something like different with it. It keeps the... Sorry, the camera keeps blurring. Look, oh, it's a dolphin is that a bottle that bottle nose do dolphin i think <clears throat> yeah so <laughs> too much fun we have like a, a seahorse but like a literal <laughs> seahorse so yeah i i love the i love the courts in this deck and then another one that I just immediately came to mind is is a classic at this point, I think, when it comes to pip decks. And it is the uh, the Triomphi della Luna by Patrick Valenza. This is the original sort of colourway. I'm not going to say it's the original original because I believe the original original was in Italian, which makes sense, right? Because it's Triomphi della Luna, which is Italiano. Um, but yeah, again, these are just fun and weird and thought-provoking and playful and this deck this deck is just excellent he's like he's dragon his dragon's not even moving it's so knight of coins he's like just stop me he's sleeping stop moving altogether i mean look at these little like 
cat demons. <laughs> King of coins with this little doll or puppet or something. I just, it just makes me happy. What even, you know? I just really love interesting mounts for the, the knights. It's always a good time. Always a good time. Fire breathing horsey demon thing, why not? So yeah, I just again this is just a a really great really great was that the title card in there? I thought I took you out with the Oh I thought I'd take this because I do you know what I did? I kept the <laughs> sorry, I, I I put these on the top and then I separated all of the court cards out from the rest of the cards, so that's why that's they can go at the back now so i remember to shuffle that back in cool so that is uh prompt number seven best court cards prompt number eight is which is your most worn out tarot deck now if this was me pulling from my like f entire tarot collection i would probably be able to show you some more like dinged up decks dinged up decks dinged up decks dinged up decks anyway um <laughs> um but none of my Marseille look particularly roughed up but considering some of them get quite a lot of rough treatment like that tarot ring that I just showed you that's like I really for some reason that's looking pretty good considering the amount of like um wear that it's got use and reading with it has got and I'm also thinking about like yeah some of the others that I'm showing you they they don't look like they, I guess when you've got so many decks, they don't get as worn down as like when I used to have less decks and less to work from. Anyway, that makes sense, right? Because it's getting spread out more evenly. So it sort of keeps them from looking too, too worn. Cesar showed him, oh my God, some of his decks had really been through the wars. It was pretty impressive. Um, but this is the uh, Alexandra Jasnak or Polish Tarot. I apologize if I'm butchering that name, but um, this I bought secondhand. So I can't lay claim to all of the wear on this deck. I can lay claim to some of the wear on it, but not all of it. Um, so this came, this was second hand. Uh, you can get this new. I edged it in like a matte gold. I actually don't like the pen that I used. It rubs off quite a bit, which does annoy me. Um, but you can see like the backs are scuffed and well loved. Um, and that sort of shows on the front. Um, and originally I was like trying to, I was like, maybe I can colour it all in gold pen, all of the borders. And I did it on one of the cards and I was like, well, it looks like trash and it took ages just to do that one card. So I was like, mm, fuck that for a game of soldiers. So I didn't bother doing that. And can I find the card where I did the entire border in the gold pen? I'm glad I didn't because the gold pen is like that I used. It's not as sticky as one of the other ones I've used before, but it's sticky enough that it would have made the deck not very well usable no i can't oh there it is it's the fucking last card there we go you can see like i drew i don't know if you can see the the pen marks and i was like mm, it still looks like i actually just prefer it looking worn so yeah but i do this deck is just so much fun i would like to buy a contemporarily like a, a contemporarily a a, a a modern print a modern printing what the fuck you know an a a more recent printing and just trim it down to just this little square in the middle to make it like a like a travel sized version of this a bit more like a bit more but it, I do like the borders and the weird like backgrounds and I love that the artwork does sort of come out of the initial box. But I do also think it would be fun to have a version that I would would just be this middle bit because it would just be such a nice little size with the square square corners. And yeah, it's one of those things that I keep saying I'll do, but I very rarely, if at all, buy duplicates of anything because there's so many other dicks that I want. Ah! Okay, so the next prompt, prompt nine, which is your most esoteric tarot deck? And mine is the same as Cesar's, which is the Thoth tarot. I have the deluxe issue, issue, version. <laughs> um, and uh, I think Cesar showed this version and a regular sized version in his video. Um, and yeah, I mean... There is no way I am au fait with this deck. It's very esoteric. I mean, I do have other esoteric decks in my collection, but again, they're not pip decks. I, I, I class the Thoth as a, as a pip deck. It's very pipish. Um, you know, I do have other esoteric decks, but they are, you know, 
they're either Smith weight based or they kind of do their own thing and go like off on one one that comes to mind is like the alchemical visions tarot that big huge honker chonker of a deck it's absolutely mahusive um and uh, that one is very esoteric but also not pippish at all um so this yeah of all my pippy decks it is uh, it is the thoth and i love lady frida harris's artwork um and i feel like uh this although i do enjoy reading with it every now and then i am by no means a thoth expert <laughs> i feel like that's a long way off but i also do feel like there was a lot of, lot of sort of edge lordy kind of making from uh alistair crowley making his deck seem like it's too difficult to understand um and sort of you know it's based on the same system as the smithwaite they've just done it in different ways um and I think a lot of people get intimidated intimidated by this. And I just think, just jump on in, you know. Um, it has a lot layered onto it. Um, and I am definitely, generally as a rule, more of a fan of that sort of stripped back, down to earth, exoteric, as Tom Benjamin calls it, kind of tarot. But every now and then you do want something a little bit sort of more OTT, right? So, yeah, that's that's my answer for prompt number nine. Prompt number 10 is what tarot deck is the best one for shadow work? Now, this is interesting, right? Because for shadow work, a lot of the time I actually do use narrative decks or, you know, like Smith Waity type based decks. And when I say narrative, I mean where you have sort of a story or sort of a, a still image, a, a snapshot of a situation in the pips cards. Um, I know a lot of people say, oh, um, an illustrated pip. But to me, Marseille's are illustrated. They're just illustrated with pips like the, they're illustrated with the the suits um, item rather than with a scene so like scenic or situational or narrative is what i tend to use for smithwaite um and for me i don't really use um the sort of marseille for shadow work that much but one that i have used is le tarot noir previously mentioned my trimmed version i trimmed it i was so annoyed that i trimmed it just the wrong bit on the back and so it just took off a little bit of the top of the numbers and a little bit of the um the name I would like to buy another version of this just so I've got a full version. Um, but at the time, I didn't know how to do the side shuffle. I hadn't worked it out yet. <laughs> and so I was like, I, can, I need it to be smaller to make it more shuffleable. Um, and now I'm like, I can shuffle bigger decks than this as long as I do it sideways. So I sort of really dinged it up. You can see I've like scrunched. I literally scrunched the cards up and bent them and, and did all the edging in different shades of topes and browns and what have you and really just really dinged it up so it looked like an old deck but yeah this is the let me just i just i'm waving it around at you and bloody show you some fucking cards so yeah this has a very sort of i always think of this as quite a um tim burton -y kind of vibe it's it's a very i mean I love this was one of the ones that I nearly picked for the colours because I love the muted colour palette for this. It's very like autumn through winter vibes. It comes out every spooky season if I hadn't worked if I haven't worked with it much throughout the year. And it's just it's just it's just fun. It's melancholy and it's has a bit of a hu dark humour to it. And it is classically Marseille, you know? So it's all you can read traditional muscle i mean look this is giving like zero vibes obviously zero is a ghost but like you know what i mean like it looks like that looks like it could be a very sort of tim burton-esque character um yeah and it's just it sets the right tone Ooh, hey froggy and um, it sets the right tone for like shadow work um some for me trying to do shadow work with a marseille and i think of the reason that i don't do a lot of the time with marseille or pip decks is that i want more information in the pip cards for shadow work i want more than this sort of stripped back way that i tend to read marseille but also a lot of the decks that i have like that i've shown you right they have very bold colors fun colors pastel colors bright colors or you've got like the classic marseille which has very sort of primary colors right and for me that just doesn't get me in the shadow work zone and this this has that tone to it it has that like you know not that every deck that you do shadow work with has to be sort of like kind of dark looking but this just gets me in the right headspace when i do want to be using a marseille for that 
very rarely, but it has. There's been a couple of spreads that I've used. Uh, Cosmic Creeper has a really good, um, like, uh, what do you call it? Digital digital spread book that's got some sort of juicy shadow work esque readings uh, spreads for you to use. I'll see if I can remember to link that down below actually, um, because um, yeah, I, I've done a couple of the readings from that with with this deck. Um, and then one that I thought would be a good contender would be the. Um, what's it called i can't remember off the top of my head like le etoile cache le tarot de etoile cache from sabat magazine this was gifted to me very kindly by someone earlier in this year and this is a real like there's real nods like it's it's a marseille in the sense of like the layout of the pip cards but there's like nods here so we've got nods to like crypto for example um and like wife the wi-fi symbol there's like a nice mix of modern like contemporary and and, and historical nods uh, i really love the artwork it's uh, is it eliza or elisa um cert singer or something i can't remember um but she's got a mass market deck that's all done in black and gold this is black and silver and the mass market one which is more of a smithway kind of deck is is in black and gold and i really want that as well um and it's just, I feel like, I haven't done um, shadow work. Look at this. I, I, this is giving me that sort of like memento more stuff that um, Patrick Valenza puts in a lot of his work. Um, I, I, I do feel like this will be a nice contender as if I'm looking for a pip deck to do shadow work with. So um, if I do, I will just try to remember to keep you posted on that front. But yeah super scrumptious super beautiful deck stunning i should remember to do a walkthrough of this but i don't know if anyone would be interested because it's been out for a while nope. okay so we're only halfway through um i got another 10 prompts or so to do it i'm a bit like it's already at 36 minutes i need to speed up okay so prompt number 11 is what tarot deck has the best backs again i will do two i'll do a fun one and i'll do like a more like not like, like a more serious one uh the first one is le dinosaurs uh de marseille um by anastasia kashian um i just love the backs it's like a play on a traditional um marseille back but you know make it dinosaurs so um i, I really like that it's kind of reversible so yeah it's isn't it just cute it's i mean it's just dinosaurs it just makes me happy so yeah it, i like that it's a nodding to a, a classic marseille back but sort of making it super fun and then the other one that i really love i mean again so many beautiful backs like the game i say i really love the backs backs on those with that seafoam green um but i really ah oh, just the, the taroki by mr freeborg this is the um classic edition you can also get a vintage sort of worn looking edition which i believe has pink backs um but i love this like delft blue you know like delft china it looks uh, like ceramics it looks like kind of that kind of color and i love the i love that it looks very beautiful and delft and then you get all the you look closely and you've got all these like skulls so it's very like classy but make it spooky but make it classy which i love i just love the stick is just beautiful in general but yeah this this beautiful delft blue bag just yum 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 prompt 12 is what tarot deck has the best card stock again i've picked a couple so it's very two very different so i have an independently produced deck here by artisan tarot this is the tarot de ambiguities uh, this deck is so much fun it's a it's a it's a linen but it's not as slippy slidey as some linen card stocks um so i find it um and the cards are not as long the cards themselves, the, the length of them isn't as long as, say, something like the um, uh, Pagan Otherworlds or even the um, Playful Heart Tarot. They're made by the same printer and they, they, they're a little longer. So they have a very similar thing. And I feel like their cardstock is a little more slippy. So it makes it harder for those decks for me to shuffle, riffle shuffle specifically. But yeah, this the, the Artisan Tarot just cards generally really nice slide you know like when you sometimes want to like fan out a deck and pick a card which is how i used to always do it back in the day before i got into like shuffle shuffling um 
and not shuffling, I'm like picking the card like in a different way, you know what I mean. Um, yeah, before I used to riffle shuffle though, I used to always overhand before I learned how to riffle shuffle. Um, yeah, it just you can see it just slides really nicely. And then on a very sort of different front is a mass market deck. Um, and it's the it's the travel sized wild unknown tarot by Kim Kranz. Now I don't have the mass market version full size of this. I only I have the independent full size, which has a very different card stock to this one. So I don't know if the mass market version full size of this um, has the same uh, as this. But I find that this card stock, at least for this pocket size deck, is really nice it's really satisfying it's not too thick it's not too thin it slides over it nicely it's not too it has a satin finish it's not too glossy it's not too matte it doesn't stick to itself and i was surprised like i literally was shuffling tons and tons of decks because i'd pulled all my decks out and i was like shuffling them and feeling the card stock and i was like literally trying to like t like doing like a list and then doing standoffs against each other until I got down to and it got down to those these two decks here so you know but you know there's other decks in my collection that have a nice card stock but like I said we're trying to we're trying to limit it so we're going to go on to prompt number 13 unlucky for some huh and Cesar asks for prompt 13 what tarot deck has the best soft silky touch Oh, this was so tricky. Again, I was fondling all the decks, <laughs> trying to work out. And actually, like, loads of them have, like, silky feel, but, like, in different ways. So, like, when I've just shown the, the Artisan Tarry, that has, like, a silky feel to it, but it's, like, linen-y. So there's, like, a, te there's, like, a, you know, it's got that crosshatch texture that you can sort of still pick up with your fingers. But this is the Diverse Tarry de Marseille. This is a print on demand. I think it's a uh, Make Playing Cards, if I remember correctly. And this has quite a, like, a very, it just... Like I said, I was feeling up all the decks and I was like running my finger over them like a weird little perv and trying to work out which ones have the the nicest cardstock and the silky feel. And this really was up there, honestly. It felt really nice on the hand. Um, let's just show some of the cards as well because it is a lovely interpretation of the Marseille. I love the colours. Yum. I just really love the colours, I love the faces. I mean green hair, oh, it's all like a dark seafoam green. I really like seafoam green, folks. I don't know if you can tell. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, just, and again, the purples. I love it when you get a Marseille that's got like pink and purple because you don't see it in like traditional Marseille. Um, yeah, just lovely, lovely feeling. Cardstock shuffles really nicely overhand and in... Uh, <coughs> uh, riffle and bridge so yeah and then the other one which has a slightly different feel but still silky it has slightly a slightly waxed coating but without it being that sort of slightly sticky or very sticky in some instances rose petal finish and this is the tarot del toro um I believe the artist is Thomas Hijo, if I remember correctly. This is like a wood cut. I don't know if it is wood block or it's wood block style done in the style of wood blocks. I feel like it might actually. I don't know if he's actually done because you see in the background it's got that like lino cut or wood block kind of pattern where you sort of carve it out. I don't know, um, but it just feels really nice. And again, it shuffles quite nicely. It slips over itself quite nicely. Oh, all the ones. Of course, would it be anything? Would it be Del Toro themed if it didn't have cogs in it, <laughs> or skulls? <laughs> um, I, I love this deck. I love this deck. My partner bought this for me, and I love it. Oh, we've got the. It's so much fun. I love Del Toro. I'm a massive Del Toro fan girl. Oh, we've got the. What are you doing in there? That's because I was feeling them up and shuffling them to work out what which which ones feel the best, and I've got that was shuffled in. Um, but yeah, just feels just feels nice. Feels very different to this one. A little more matte, less shine to it, but still nice. So yeah, but like I mean, like I said again, I probably could have shown a whole bunch of decks for this prompt, but yeah.
Holy moly, we're getting there. We are on to uh, prompt number 14, which is wh what tarot deck has the best sound when you shuffle it? OK, so I again, pick two for two different reasons, right? Because there's ones that sound really good when you overhand shuffle them, but maybe the card stock is too thick to riffle shuffle. And you've got ones that riffle shuffle like a dream, but they don't necessarily sound too sexy when you're like shuffling them overhand. So the first one I'm going to show you is the mass market version of the Antique Anatomy Tarot by Claire Goodchild. I love this deck. I edged mine in an antique linen uh, ink, <laughs> which is very appropriate. And this is the one that I've picked for riffle shuffling. Now, it seems maybe that different areas get a different version of cardstock for this mass market because I saw someone share their mass market version of this and they hated the cardstock and it seemed like it was a lot thicker. The cardstock for this, I've heard people, at least in the UK, complain that it's too thin or I think when it was first released, people complained that it was too thin and maybe they've updated the cardstock and now it's too thick. It seems to be a thing that publishers struggle with a lot is sort of nailing the the cardstock getting it right um but i because it is so flexible right it, it it riffle shuffles so well um and it's really satisfying right um and let's do a little overhand i tend to overhand vertically these days it doesn't sound too it just sounds like a standard right but it doesn't have that sort of like extra shuffly susurration that you look for when you get the like thicker or sort of um, meatier cardstock and so for overhand shuffling again I was just shuffling so many decks I nearly picked La Corte de Taroki but actually because it's quite difficult to shuffle just because this the sound of that the cards make when they slide over each other is nice but they often also slap against each other in like really thick chunks which can make quite an unsatisfying noise um, so I ended up picking this one and this is the Low Scarabeo it's a Soprafino so it's a copy of the yeah, the Soprafino Tarot. It's an Italian deck. Um, it's really beautiful. This was gifted to me by a very kind person. Um, and uh, yeah, it's the card. So this is a mass market deck, but the card stock for this is feels quite thick. Because some of the decks that I was shuffling, the, the sound was too sort of almost high pitched, if that makes sense, where it sounded too... I don't know. I feel like decks that have more texture to them, because this is very smooth and silky as well, um, have a nicer susurration sound. But because they also tend to be harder for me to shuffle due to my small hands, they they clump together. And so the sound isn't as satisfying when I do it as when someone with um, larger hands who can manipulate that deck more easily can sort of shuffle it you know so I find I really enjoy the smaller decks overhand the sound they make because you get nice little chunky bits not chunky but little little bits rather than big chunks I don't know if that makes any fucking sense but that's the way I'm trying to I'm trying to describe it I don't know if I'm doing it very successfully but there we go so that was prompt number 14 Prompt number 15 is which of your tarot decks is the most understood, most misunderstood? So one I'm going to show is one that I seem to think I misunderstand. And, and then I'm going to pick one that I think just people generally tend to misunderstand. Um, so the first one is the one that I feel like I, I just don't always get. Um, and it's going to be the Anna Mundi Tarot by Creeping Moon. And I did speak about this in, I think it was the video I put up last week um, with the Taromance take that uh, Sylvia Tara Magpie did uh, put out. Um, and I think it's just, I don't, I find that I don't pick up what it's putting down and sort of objectively, I, you know, it's a, it's a pips with feeling. Um, you do get like a mixture of like a, a situational scenic thing and then, and then the cards, some of them are more pippish than others. And I can also see for the most part, the reasoning behind the animal choices, for example, but I do find for some reason, I just don't seem to always get the kind of readings that I want from. I don't feel like I'm, I don't know what it is. And, and this was in the unrequited love section for me because I want it to, I want it to love me back. I mean, look at this little, mm, look at the little voice. Um, and it just, it just, it doesn't love me. It's just not that into me. Eh? Um, and I just, <laughs> 
I just I love animal decks and it just it just I mean to me in my head canon this is black Phillip, right? Um I just I don't know. Like this makes sense for the Hierophant and the King of Cups and I don't know. Why won't you talk to me like I want you to? So yeah, I feel like I just maybe misunderstand this deck or we're just not jiving. I don't know. And there are a, a, a handful of decks that are like that where they just don't talk to me in the way that I, I, I would like them to. And it's like, gives me a sad, but but there we go and then i'm going to pick for the for the deck that i think people just misunderstand generally here i'm going to show you the cbd marseille uh by um uh yoav bendov so that's what the bd stands for in the cbd the kamwan bendov um and I'm sharing this just as an example of Marseille in general. I think people that don't read Marseille maybe misunderstand Marseille. I certainly did. I was, you know, I'm far from uh, being thinking of that. I, I definitely thought they were ugly, but also I was like, but it's just like, how do you read? What the fuck? You know what I mean? Right. So, and I always used to think, oh, it's always better to learn on a Smith weight. And I flipped that. I mean, learn or whatever you want. Learn whatever system you want to learn, whatever. It doesn't really matter. But now I'm like, I actually think it's easier to learn Marseille before learning Smith weight. Um, I think the images on the pips of the Smith weight can maybe throw people. I know, and I, I, you know what? scratch that because i do think it depends on the kind of person you are and, and i'm a very visually orientated person so i would have thought that maybe having you know a scenic as a situational pip card would help me but i probably think that it locked me in too much into a particular meaning and i was just sort of reading too much into that particular image and not getting the broader the broader meanings sometimes um and i do read marseille and smithwaite kind of differently there is sometimes some overlap and some blending because it's all in the tool bit, toolbox it's all in the, the noggin but i do think people misunderstand the um this is all in order by the way i just realized it's all in order because i've been is it all in order no it's not all in order i thought it was all in order well it's kind of in order is it an order? no it's no it's not it's just all these oh no do you know what it's what i've put in order i've put my tarot classic in order because i was redoing um some tarot study classes just as a refresher for funsies because why not right who else does that it's like i've already done this course but i'll do it again because i don't know it's fun <laughs> um and I've sort of been slow, I just sort of, yeah, wanting to slip back into Marseille because I've had a real sort of riding the Smithwaite road, road for, wave, road, what? Uh, for a good while now. And I'm like feeling the pull to Marseille again, especially this video, this prompts, these prompts are helping with that as well. Um, but yeah, I've, I've put my tarot classic back in order because I was reading with just the, the, the major arcana, the trumps for some of the lessons i was doing but yeah i think people misunderstand it maybe they don't understand how it's how you could even read a pip card from a marseille or you know and and that's fine like see why are these or maybe i did put it in order and it's just been i've shuffled it a couple of times i don't know i'm confused meh but yeah that i think the tarot de marseille is an oft misunderstood deck system you know um and i'm here to say yo it's like super liberating and fun and if you want to learn give it a go and if you don't want to learn you don't have to that's 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 groovy right so it's like no you do you boo prompt number 16 sweet 16 the most historical or ancient uh deck in your collection let me just actually read the prompt which is your most ancient tarot deck or the most historical okay so my most historical deck i don't own a freaking visconti saucer still can you believe that as someone who loves reading like pip and marseille decks so after after watching cesar's video i like hunted down a like cheap i think possibly secondhand i can't remember if it was new or secondhand copy of a, of a visconti because i was like this is ridiculous i think i thought of like 12 pounds with three posted which is they're basically giving it away so 
I, that's what I did because I was like, this is unacceptable at this point. Um, so my most ancient is not a, is not an Italian Sforzi Visconti deck. It is a Visconti Sforzi deck. It is a um, a Jean Noble, and this is the Jean uh, Noble by Jean Claude Flournoy, um, and it's from 1650. Um, and it's the yeah, it's the oldest deck. I love the cream background. I love the backs on this. I love the sort of slightly muted sort of almost olive esque. Not quite. Yes, almost olive ask green this is one that has that golden yellow rather than a bright yellow this beautiful pale blue and there's a little bit of the pink in this one as well um it's the only noble that i have i still don't have a dudal, a dudal. can you believe that i still don't have a gasman i would love a gasman not enough pennies or enough space <laughs> Or enough time to read with them all, but I want them. I don't know, I'm just clearly losing the plot because I'm so hungry at this point. It's like half past one. It's well into my lunchtime. But yeah, this is the oldest deck that I have. I also wanted to show like a deck that is made to look historical, but isn't because it's so much fun. Hold on a second. And it is La Corte de Taroki. Oh my god, is it um is it I can't remember, is it Anna Maria D'Onofrio? Or is it, I can't remember. Deno, I can't read. I can't. Blooming egg. Hold on a second. Yeah, I was all right. Anna Maria D'Onofrio. Uh, my brain was just like, I don't know if that's right, because I always think of like Vincent D'Onofrio, the actor, and it like throws me off. But this is one of those decks, like, I call this the bookmark deck because it's long and skinny and it's like literally like on like watercolor paper or some shit i mean it's not shit it's, it's very high quality it's beautiful deck um and it's sort of it's very can you hear that sound like it's got a really lovely clunky bass to it this is our sort of put it that bass sound but but because it's and i'm trying to do this through a screen which is not the best thing with this deck um so before i kind of got the hang of i tend to overhand shuffle this upright and sort of close to my chest so if it falls it falls towards me and i can just grab it um i did for a while try like washing this on the like table um but i had to like if you're doing it on like velvet or whatever it doesn't really work and also i was worried about like ruining the fronts of the cards because there's no like lamination or anything i was like i'm gonna stop this i'm just gonna learn to like just shuffle it as best i can overhand and like riffle shuffle forget about it. it ain't gonna happen but yeah it looks anyway i'm meant to be like showing the damn cards and i'm like fannying about with it in front of you sorry so yeah this like is a deck that looks historical but isn't and uh i just love that because when I first saw this deck, I genuinely thought it was a replication of a, of a of a of a classic, you know, extant. It's a reproduction of an extant deck, um, and I was sort of blown away that it wasn't. It's obviously it's an Italian deck, not a French deck, and it's beautiful. So the titles, I mean, all the titles and the numbers are in Italiano, not Espanol. Or in France, not Espanol, that's because I'm thinking about César. In the Francais, it is in Italian. Yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Again, not a Marseille, but but a pip, a pip deck. And I just wanted to show you that because I love this deck and the faces. This is another. This was another contender for the faces because they're just. I just love. Look at these little. No, I don't love the faces in these. Oh, there's some really. Like, I love it. I always, in my head canon is that they've, I know they've got like a circlet on, but my head canon is they've got like rollers in there. I don't know. Um, but yeah, so the La Corte de Trochi by Ana Maria de Nofrio. Prompt number 17, most, uh, <coughs> excuse me, which tarot deck was the most surprising for good or for bad? Um, again, coming right back at you straight away is La Corte de Trochi. Um And it, it like, I, I don't want to like say mean things about this, but it is it was bad in the sense of when I got it and I I was surprised by how um just how chunky it was. I hadn't quite realized just like quite how thick the cardstock was. So this is an El Manegolo deck. Um and you know, this is the only one that I own, but I just really wanted one of their decks and um, I just really thought this was beautiful. And I had seen people talking about this on their channels and they had mentioned how sort of thick and chunky and like what an unusual sort of shape it is for a tarot deck. But I didn't quite appreciate 
just quite how I don't know why and I think it's also because people showing it might have had larger hands and so it doesn't look as chunky I've got quite small hands right so let's just get a, another like standard thickness deck and show you the difference hold on a second let's just grab the game I'll say so like you I mean like can you <laughs> and so that's why I was like how do I how do I shuffle this? I love this deck. How do I shuffle it? It was just like, and I'm very, I sort of reiterating what I said in the last prompt, but full disclosure, I forgot that this was the next prompt. <laughs> so I kind of gave all the goods away. Um, but even if I grab like a deck that is a little, little thicker than this, for example, or thicker than the game I say. So like, for example, here we have the new choice tarot de Marseille, which is chunkier than the game Marseille and yet still like my god it's such a chunky monkey and then because it's that awkward shape it just compounds the issue so I was just trying to like straighten it out on my tummy um it's a lot right so, so like it was a surprise in like a bad way when it arrived but it turned into a good way because I, I I managed to sort of make my work around it and now I can kind of shuffle it I don't get the you know if you're riffle shuffling you're going to get a better mix of cards just mathematically just statistically that's just the way it works um but they are just there are just some decks that I can't riffle shuffle and so I just have to overhand for like a really 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 long time <laughs> before I feel comfortable like pulling cards uh, so yeah that was prompt number 17 prompt number 18 which tarot deck has the best purchase story now again if I was going back to like my entire tarot deck I would have more interesting tarot purchase stories because back in the day uh you didn't really order things online you had to like go into a shop and like have a look at the very small number of cards that might be available for you to see from that deck and then pick a deck and just go with it which is how I got my first few decks um and so with Marseille because I only started reading Marseille in uh, 2018 we're sort of well into the era of online shopping right so pretty much every deck almost uh especially in the last few years that I've bought has come from an online store um and so I was trying to think what from my Marseille and Pip decks would fit that and actually I realized it would be the tarot classic see here we go I said that I had sectioned off all of my majors because I've been doing uh, some study with them um, it has this very sort of old school plaid back it's a red and off-white with a metallic gold running through it I've come to like very much love the backs as well as the fronts um, the colors on this deck just I just love it again these delicious pinks and greens oh I love green um, and the reason this was is was a like the best purchase story I guess is because I really sort of hunted down for this deck um it's an out of print deck and it's can be fairly easy to find but other times not um and so I was rummaging around and I found lots of like used copies that didn't look great but were charging more than they really should be and then I stumbled on someone on eBay selling a deck and I don't think they were like you know someone that usually sells tarot decks it wasn't like a tarot shop it was just like some rando person that had this deck it was brand new it was still in its like plastic on you know the cards came shrink wrapped but in that like old cigarette style where you pull the little thing um and but the box was a bit dinged up um and yeah, this is a this is an over 50 year old deck. I think is it 50? I can't remember what year this is, but um or maybe it is 50, 50, 72, 73, 19, 72, 19, 73. So it's at least 50 years old or around 50 years old. Um and so I got it for like a tenner, <laughs> including ship like postage, and it was a UK based person. Um I'm just gonna let's just show the people cards just because I've already got those separated out um and actually no because they're going to get out of order and i'm still using them for study so there are people cards in the because of the courts so let's do this um the colors are so yummy but yeah so it was real like a real like hunting it down and trying to find a copy that was in good con good condition con good condition used or new at a reasonable price with reasonable shipping 
um and this just was yeah it was just it was meant to be i was so excited when i found this copy um and it came really quickly as well i think it was like first class postage i think it arrived the next day or the day after first or second class postage arrived quickly i was so happy to have it in my hands and i think this might have been the second marseille deck or like marseille-esque deck that i bought it's not a true you know all the titles are in english and there's some changes um but yeah, I just, I, I feel like I, I worked to get this, to hunt down a bargain uh, and a decent copy of it. And yeah, so that's probably the best I can do, I'm afraid, on that front. Um, the prompt number 19 is a tarot deck that you only use for readings for yourself. Hang on, let me read it. What tarot deck do you always use for self-readings? Well, um I showed in the Taromance Tropes video last week that I did um, that one of the decks I only ever use for myself is the Litaro de Femme Erotique. Uh, I don't read for other people with that. And one of the my Marseille decks that I only read for myself with do, 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 let me grab it, is the uh, Triomphi della Luna, but this time the Paradoxical Rose version. I realised very quickly... Oh, are they all upside down? What is going? It's upside down. It's all mixed up. It's probably got the bloody... No, if I, I thought I'd yeah, taken out the uh, the doobelies, the cards for the uh, oracle. Oh, no, they're in there. What did I do? It's because, do you know what it is? It's because I bloody was shuffling all the decks trying to work out which ones sound the nicest and have the nicest card stock. And I've ended up shuffling all the title cards and extra cards into my decks when I try to keep them separated at the front of the deck for when I... <laughs> I'm going to have to sort these all out afterwards. I've given myself so much work. <laughs> anyway let's just see what comes up it doesn't matter um yeah so the, the paradoxical rose version which was gifted to me and i was just i never thought i was going to get a hold of a copy of this and when it arrived i was just like oh my god i'd lost it after this deck for so long that when i finally got it in my hands i was just oh, it's my precious and um yeah this is this is mine this is my triant fee no one no one is getting a reading with this this bad boy this is my baby oh, i love it so much i love it so much it's it's the colors again there's almost like a, you're spotting a theme there's like some purples in this but there's like these delicious pinks and again an almost sea foam green I've yet to actually, I keep meaning to get a black light so I can see it glowing because wouldn't that just be awesome? But I'm like, where do I put the black light? Can you get black lights that are like lamps that you can just stand on your table? Because I don't have a way to like warm out mine, to be honest. But it'd be fun to have one to um, have for reading at this desk uh, for myself when I'm being a moody bitch and I want to like, you know although you know it's funny now that i think about it this would be a fun one for shadow work as well why have i never thought about that especially given like just the nature of the artwork oh interesting okay so that is oh that is prompt number 19 we have two more there are in fact 21 prompts this is just getting so long because i'm a waffly waffler um so the um Prompt number 20 is, uh, which is the most difficult tarot deck to be mastered? <coughs> Excuse me. Meow, meow, meow. Let me just grab it. It's over here. And that is, again, I'm going to say Cesar is the Thoth tarot. Um, I could say that any deck, whether it's a Smithwaite, a Marseille or a Thoth, you know, you can spend a lifetime learning and mastering the craft honing the craft of, of reading tarot um and never know every single thing about it right so i'm more au fait with marseille that rhymes <laughs> and smith way but i would never say that i'm a master of them and i don't know if i ever will master them and that's part of the fun for me right but the one that really like again is is because it's so it's so layered sort of visually like we this like i said the smithwaite comes from the same 
you know, base the Golden Dawn uh, as the as the Thoth, but they've gone about it very differently, sort of aesthetically. So where the Smithway is a lot more stripped back in its in its art style compared to sort of this one, um, it's it's and it's a lot more abstract in its sort of depictions of things. It's a lot more pippish, um, but it's not even so much that because I find that I can sort of read with this just by going off the imagery. Where I think I stumble is all of like the Kabbalah stuff, which doesn't really isn't doesn't really interest me and i do have some sort of qualms with that um whole situation and then we've also got astrology again i don't really do astrology there's you know numerology which i do sort of use to a certain extent but there's just so much rammed rammed into it and like you know obviously all the stuff with the golden door it's it's like super duper esoteric and, and that's part of what's the appeal of it right because again like i said you can spend a lifetime learning about it and reading with it and mastering it um and so yeah i just feel like it just it feels more more you know um so yeah i would say the same as his it would be the thoth uh and that's prompt number 20 and now we do the final prompt oh my god if you made it this far so far oh, holy crap well done and Cesar, my goodness, what a question to end this on. 21, what tarot deck is the best overall? I mean, what a question. Blooming heck. How am I supposed to answer that? I mean, there's too many to choose from. Even just by choosing from my Marseille and Pib decks, I'm like, oh, I don't know. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick the Marseille that I'm currently like having a love affair with and I'm just like super into right now. We're having like a real moment. Um, and that is, again, The Gay Marseille by Charlie Claire Burgess. Um, you know, ask me in a year and it might be different. Ask me when I'm considering my entire tarot deck collection. It might be different. It might be different from one week to the next, right? But... Oh, I should probably show different. Did I show? I'm not sure which cards I've shown and which ones I haven't. So, because obviously I showed this at the beginning, but I just, I think I was taking them from the top. So this will be showing. I'm pretty sure I showed some of these. Let's just cut through. We've got our, here we go. Show you some different cards. Um, yeah, I just, I just, I just love it. I love it. Like I said before, I just love the colours and the depictions and the inclusiveness and the Marseilleness of it all. And I just, I just, I just love it. And it's just so beautiful. It makes me happy, uh, which is appropriate, right? Because it's the gay Marseille, and obviously the uh, the original meaning of gay meant to be gay and happy um, in that sense before people started trying to use it as a as a slur and then loads of people reclaimed it because fuck you <laughs> homophobes um so yeah i i would say at the moment the game i say ha oh, 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 that's the last one what can you hear my throat i'm so thirsty and i'm so froggy i'm literally like sweating a bit here Ugh. i had to close the window because it's always noisy outside and like i just it just yeah people being noisy so i have to close the window and now i'm too warm um but yeah if you've made it this far well done i don't know maybe go like grab a cup of tea and reward yourself with a biscuit or like i don't know a walk around the block <laughs> after listening to me waffle on for bloody ages what are we at an hour and 12 minutes and almost 30 seconds holy shit so i want to say thank you to cesar for this mammoth i don't even know how he got his in let's just see how long his is because i've got his up here in one hour two minutes and 59 seconds so i did over 10 minutes longer than him i'm impressed with that because i'm a real waffler right so actually i feel like getting in just over 10 just 10 minutes a little over than the original pro uh, uh, tag creator is not too bad actually so um if you have spent all this time watching and are listening to me talk about uh my tarot collection via this really fun tag thank you so much i really appreciate it i hope that wherever you are you are safe and you are well and hopefully i'll see you in the next one and did I say thank you to Cesar? Thank you to Cesar. I did say thank you because I remember doing that. Thank you, Cesar, for tagging me and for making this fun tag. Oh, my, I can't even remember what it's two minutes ago. I think I need to go have some food and some hydration. I think that's, that's, that's the ticket. So, yeah. See you in the next one. Ciao.